Today's story is The Ice Berries by Stephen Aitken and Sylvia Sikandar. Usha's home was high up in the Himalayas. It was very beautiful, but life was not easy for Usha and her family. They grew a few vegetables and kept several yaks, which gave them milk and wool. Her father was a guide and he would go away for months at a time. Usha and her brother would take it in turns every morning to take the yaks to find fresh grass. The person who stayed at home would look after their old grandfather. One monsoon day, it was Usha's turn. Late in the afternoon, a wild storm blew in. Deep purple clouds floated overhead in an angry sky like giant ink drops. Usha struggled to gather her yaks together. Come on, come on, she yelled as large cold raindrops splashed off her head and hands. Suddenly, Usha slipped on the wet stones. She rolled and tumbled down the mountainside until a large rock stopped her fall. She lay there unconscious and still. The storm rumbled and rolled through the mountains for several hours, but then it was gone. Jupiter rose in the east and a full moon peeked over the mountain tops. Usha woke up shivering in the chilly night air. She sat up and looked around. In the misty moonlight, she could see the icy blue outline of one yak peering down at her. It was Chandu, named after the moon. What happened? Where am I? Usha murmured. She got to her feet and stumbled towards the yak. As she grabbed his long wet hair to keep her balance, Chandu lowered his head and knelt down. Somehow, Usha climbed on his back and slumped over. The yak followed the long moonlit path home over the rolling hills. Rajesh ran up the path to meet her. What happened? We were so worried when you didn't come home at sunset. He cried, helping her down from the yak. We searched everywhere for you. I fell and hit my head. When I woke up, Chandu was waiting beside me. He carried me home. Usha hugged her yak. From that night onwards, Usha and Chandu were inseparable. Wherever she went, the yak was always close behind. One morning, Usha found Chandu lying on the ground. Get up, Chandu, she said. It's time to go. Chandu rolled over and let out a moan. Grandfather, grandfather, called Usha. Come quickly, Chandu is sick. Her grandfather hobbled out of the house and knelt down beside the yak. He shook his head. Chandu is not well. We don't have any medicine to cure him, but he may recover if we keep him warm and let him rest. Stay with Chandu, said Rajesh when he saw Usha crying. I'll take care of the other yaks. All that day, Usha sat beside Chandu. Get better, Chandu. Please get better, she whispered over and over as she stroked his brown furry head. But the yak grew weaker and weaker. She gave him water to drink and tasty sweets to eat, but he took no notice. The golden sun set behind the snow-capped peaks. Rajesh came home and tethered the yaks outside the house. At the same time, a monk wearing ochre robes came along the path. Grandfather greeted him. Please sit and drink tea. It was the custom in the mountains to give shelter to the travelers. As Usha prepared strong tea with salt and yak butter, she couldn't hold back her tears. What's wrong? asked the monk 
as Usha placed the glass of hot tea on the table beside him. Chandu, my yak is sick and we don't have any medicine to cure him, she sobbed. Let me see him, said the monk. The monk went into the shed and stroked the yak's head. There is only one thing that can save him. He needs wild ice berries that grow high on the mountain peaks. They are difficult to find, but they will make him better. None of us can travel that far, said Grandfather. My old legs will not carry me up the steep mountain paths. My son Bahadur won't be home for several weeks. Grandfather, let me go, said Usha. The old man shook his head. It's too dangerous for you. Storms come suddenly. People say a yeti lives up there and many travelers have disappeared mysteriously. Grandfather, have you ever seen a yeti? asked Usha. No, but I've heard many stories, said the old man, stroking his long gray beard thoughtfully. I don't believe in yetis, said Usha with a shrug. Early next morning, Chandu was still very sick. Usha packed some flat brown bread, yak milk cheese and tulsi leaves in her basket. She called Rajesh and whispered to him, I am going to find the ice berries. But it is dangerous in the high mountains, said Rajesh. I'll be back by evening, said Usha. I promise. She set off at a brisk pace towards the peaks. It is hot in the mountains when the sun shines. The sun beat down and Usha stumbled several times on the steep path. Each time she picked herself up and kept climbing. She traveled through the rhododendron forests. The trees laden with crimson flowers shone in the morning light. At midday, Usha reached the snow line. She sat in the snow too short of breath to take another step. Suddenly, a deep rumbling sound echoed across the silent snow. It came in waves, followed by deep silence. Usha jumped up and looked around for a place to hide. She saw a cave and crept inside. It was dark and damp. Oh no, the sound came from somewhere close by. Usha peered into the gloom and saw the outline of a large hairy animal. It's the Yeti, she whispered. The Yeti whimpered and slowly raised his foot. You're injured, said Usha. She forgot her grandfather's warning and went towards the Yeti. I have some tulsi leaves in my bag. They will help your foot heal. The Yeti winced when Usha wrapped the healing leaves around his foot. I need something to keep the leaves in place. She looked around, but the dark, damp cave was bare. She took her woolen shawl off her shoulders, tore it into strips and wrapped it around the tulsi leaves. Your leg will get better soon, she said. Now I must go and find wild ice berries for my yak Chandu. He is very sick. The Yeti stirred. He stretched and uncurled until his head almost touched the roof of the cave. For a moment, Usha felt frightened as the Yeti towered above her. But he touched her hand gently, limped out of the cave and beckoned Usha to follow. Although he moved slowly, Usha had to scramble over the rocks to keep up. When they came to a dark, narrow ravine in the mountains, Usha hesitated as a cold breeze blew over her head and face. Just ahead, she saw a gate covered in ice. The Yeti tried to open it, but the gate was frozen shut. 
the Yeti stepped over the gate. He turned around and lifted Usha over the gate. They walked past tiny waterfalls which tinkle like wind chimes and splashed over turquoise rocks into silver pools. A secret garden, said Usha. I could never have found this by myself. The Yeti shuffled along a path of white velvet snow and stopped by a cluster of icy blue vines. He searched through the heart-shaped leaves until he found clusters of crystal berries sparkling like tiny rainbows. Ice berries! cried Usha. She picked some of the berries, wrapped them in vine leaves and put them into her basket. Then she followed the Yeti's footprints as they walked back out of the garden. When they reached the Yeti's cave, Usha gave him the bread and yak milk cheese. Thank you for helping me find the ice berries. My Chandu now has a chance to get better. She touched the Yeti's hand to say goodbye and saw the tears in his eyes. Don't be sad. Now that I know where you live, I'll come and visit you again. She walked carefully down the steep mountain path because she didn't want to fall again. As night fell, she could see strange shadows dancing on the rocks and hear muffled whisperings. Finally, she reached the path near her home and saw the tiny lights of her house. A dim yellow light was coming closer and closer as it bobbed up and down. She heard Rajesh's voice. Usha, Usha, is that you? She ran down the path to meet him. You're safe, said Rajesh, hugging her close. I was afraid that you had met the Yeti. I did meet the Yeti, replied Usha as they walked home. Grandfather was waiting for them. Usha, you're safe. I was so worried about you, he said holding her face in his weathered hands. I'm sorry, Grandfather, said Usha, but I had to try to save Chandu. I've brought the ice berries. She ran straight to Chandu, who was lying on a blanket in the shed. She sat on the floor beside the yak and opened the wine leaves. The berries had melted. Usha saw the soggy leaves and burst into tears. Chandu raised his head and licked the moisture off the leaves. Then he turned towards Usha and licked the tears from her cheeks. He rolled over again and lay still. After a few moments, Chandu slowly stood on all four wobbly legs. Chandu, you're getting better! Usha threw her arms around the yak's neck. You're lucky you didn't meet the Yeti up on the mountain, said Grandfather. I did meet him, said Usha. He showed me where the ice berries grow. I thought you didn't believe in yetis, said Grandfather. I do now, replied Usha. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this wonderful story. We'll see you soon. Goodbye.